Hey, Rock Family, Reverend Antonio here again with Pastor Dan. Hey, everybody. Yes, we are very excited with this new series of podcasts that we were doing about our grace series, um, really getting a chance to dive back in to what could be complex and just kind of taking it apart and showing how really it's it's simply what the Word of God is saying. Uh, this past week, uh, we were talking about the sanctification by grace, and Pastor Dan laid out a few points uh, that I'll go through. Number one, uh, the sanctification by grace starts with the truth of God's Word. Uh, and then he we talked, number two, is seen in our lifestyle, and lastly, and not least, empowers purity. Uh, Pastor Dan, if you would, kind of just give us some of the thoughts. I know one of the questions that came or uh, a talking point was the law versus liberty. If you could expound on that. Yeah, I I definitely can. And I think the neat thing about a podcast like this is that we have some time to dive into more of what the word has to say. If I could say one of the things that I get frustrated with as a teacher, you know, my, my primary gifting is not preaching, it's teaching. And as a teacher of the word of God is that there is so much more to say on a subject than what we're able to cover in that short message time that we have together. And so I was using these scriptures from Romans chapter number six, and really we could have dove into the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I, it, for me, probably the most hardest part of my job is what do you edit? What do you leave out? You know? (laughs) And so I'm excited to kind of open and unpack some of these thoughts of what, what does it mean? Because I think I said that when you clean up your act, that's not law, that's liberty. Yeah. And really, you see that in Romans chapter 6, because he says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And he says, Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live in it any longer? You know, we were bound in sin. Yeah. Uh, Sin was our master. Sin, Sin held us captive. And so when we clean up our act and we're getting away from sin, that's not law. That's a liberty. That yeah. should be freeing for yeah. us. The yeah. fact that we can clean up our act by the grace of God should shouldn't make people angry that you're you're just you know right. oh, yeah. trying to do works or so, you're just trying to do works. Well, yes, I am trying to do works, good works. Yeah, yeah. But not to get me saved, but because I am saved. That's right. And that's really where uh, you know I I think that it's freeing to know that I don't have to stay bound to sin. I don't have to be ashamed of things that I used to be ashamed of. I don't I don't have to hide those things. I can bring it out into light. You know, anytime you lift up a rock, oftentimes the bugs will scatter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because there's light there now. Mm-hmm. And those dark, damp places start to receive warmth and light. Mm-hmm. And our hearts are a lot like that. When we get saved, it's almost as if there's that veil that the book of Second uh, Corinthians talks about that's removed from our heart. That's great. And something that was dark, something that was filled with sin, now all those sins scatter at the light of the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, we're no longer bound. We're no longer held down. Now we're free. There's a liberty that takes place. When I know that I don't have to be bound any longer. Uh, the problem I think people get screwed up on this is that we still sin. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. still, we, we still stumble in many things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, John said, he who says he's without sin is a liar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he said that because, <laughs> you know, it, it, it'd be easy for the prideful to say, I have no sin. Yeah. And it'd be hard for the sinner to, you know, try and walk in that reality as well because there would be so much shame from hearing other people say, I have no sin. But here he opens up the door and says, listen, guys, we're going to stumble. Uh, we're we're going to struggle with these things. And then the Apostle Paul says, the things that I want to do in the flesh are the things that I don't do. And the things that I don't do are the very things that I should be doing. And he has this inward struggle. But at the end of that whole discourse, he says, but thanks be to God. Yeah. Yeah. I give thanks to our Lord God who, yeah. who gave us the victory in Jesus Christ. By grace, we are saved, and now we don't have to be bound by our, our sin any longer. You know, verse 7 in, in chapter 6 says, He who has died has been freed from sin. If we died with Christ, Christ we believe we shall also live with him. Once again, death is bondage. Yeah. Sin is bondage. Grace and salvation is freedom. It's liberty. It's life. Jesus has been raised from the dead, and now we can be raised from the dead. And verse 14 comes along and says, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. And he says, What then? Shall we sin because we're not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves as slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked, though you were slaves of sin. We were bound. 
Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, that's a, a system of teaching, to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, once again, there's freedom, there's liberty. Yeah. Yeah. And being set free from sin, verse 18, you became slaves of righteousness. So now we are bound to the right way of God. The right way of God is expressed in our works. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where people, I think, get messed up, is that they see works as only being you're working for your salvation. It's just legalism. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see it that way. I see that I'm saved, and now I am a slave to righteousness. That means that I am bound to do my works what is right according to what God says. Because I've been freed from sin. I have the liberty to live for God now. It's a totally freeing thought. Well, you, you know, and, and essentially that kind of... Okay, so you can take works in that sense, and now you would uh, use a, a, a term responsibility. Uh, and, and so that some kind could wonder that sounds like works you know if you're all of a sudden you're putting a responsibility on me that sounds like works and and we you know grace covers that we don't have to do that what does responsibility mean there well again yeah uh, grace covers you for salvation you don't have to work for your salvation but if you have the knowledge of god the bible says that we have to live up to the truth that we've attained to that we will be held accountable to that truth, to the level of knowledge that we have about God. We have to live according to that knowledge, and that's how we'll be judged. And the Bible says that if we don't do the good that we know to do, to us it's sin. Yeah, yeah. So if we're saying grace is just covers everything, and we know that there's a good thing we should be doing, but because we play the grace card, like I said in this in this yeah, message, yeah. you know, and we, we we use it as a license for evil, Jude yeah. chapter one verse four, mm-hmm. uh, they they turn the grace of God into lewdness, they turn the grace of God into a license for evil, they play that grace card, and they say I don't have to do any works, but they're denying the good things that they should be doing then you have to deal with that scripture that says to you it's sin. Yeah. And now you're back again in bondage. So responsibility. I love what my friend Tony Cook says. He's a brilliant teacher uh, and great man of God. Travels the world preaching the gospel and teaching people, uh, building churches. And he said responsibility is our response to God's ability. That's good. Yeah. It's a response awesome. to his ability. So with grace comes a responsibility mm-hmm. every, to everything in the Bible. There's a revelation and there's a response. Mm-hmm. When I realize what true worship is, that it's not just a song, it's not just a tune, yeah. it's not just a melody or a harmony, it's not a beat, that it's not any of those things, but that true worship is laying down my life in sacrificial obedience mm-hmm. because that's how Abraham worshiped. That's how Jesus worshiped God yeah. was they laid down their lives in sacrificial obedience. Then my response then to that revelation is I'm going to lay down my life in sacrificial obedience. Yeah. There is a responsibility that's there. Um, I love what the apostle Paul said in first Corinthians chapter number 15. This is another scripture I wanted to use in the message, but we just had too much good stuff going on to include it. But 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, the Apostle Paul is talking about his life, and he's talking about his labors, right? Now, labors is works yeah. for any of us. Uh-huh. And he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored, that is, I worked more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. I think people get screwed up on this because he's, he ends it with not I, but the grace of God. So that's where people could say, well, did he, he must have not done anything. Mm-hmm. No, he did do a lot. Remember the apostle Paul's back was the one that was beaten. Yeah. Yeah. His body was the one that was in the deep for three days. Right. He was the one that had stones thrown at him by the Jews until he was drug out of the city, them thinking that he was dead, and the disciples raised him up afterwards. (laughs) I don't know if he actually died and then they raised him from the dead, or if he just seemed like he was dead, (laughs) and they dragged him out, and then he got up after he regained his strength. Either way, wow. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, uh, thank God I I live in today. You know, (laughs) I don't have to deal with some of those things. Uh, You know, maybe we'll see persecution in the future, but... By the grace of God, will endure yeah. those Amen. things. But really, that's what he's saying is it wasn't just the ability of God and I didn't do anything with it. I didn't receive it in vain. He says, I labored more abundantly. He actually got out there and went to work. 
Yeah. He preached the gospel. He laid hands on the sick. He baptized a few people. He taught in the churches. He wrote letters. He prayed in the spirit. And uh, he he worked, you know, and, and just like, you know, chores of the house. Parents say, hey, you have a responsibility to take out the trash every Friday. Yeah. You know, and that way it gets to the curb and the trash man comes and picks it up. That's your responsibility. Your response to now that ability, you, yeah. I've given you permission to do that. And we say, well, what permission? You've you given me a chore. you give me a task. Yes, God has tasked us mm-hmm. with spreading the message of the gospel to the world. God has tasked us with the responsibility of shining the light through a holy life. God has tasked us with his grace, using that to build people and to love people and to encourage and to heal the sick and cast out demons and to go and, and, and build church and to build community and relationships and to be the, the, the force of what God is doing on the earth, to bring it in through our prayers. God will empower all of those things, but it's a responsibility. Yeah. It is a task. It is a chore. It is a labor. It is a work, but we're not in it alone. Yes, we're laboring more abundantly, but the grace of God in us is what's going to fuel and empower ministry, life, service, church, all of our labors. Anything that we could be working towards can be empowered by the grace of God. And that, again, is not law. That's liberty. We're free to live, free to do that stuff. That's cool. You you know, you mentioned, Pastor Dan, in the message about uh, as you were teaching, it's like drinking water from a fire hose because it seemed like so much. Yet by the time we got to the end, it it really... was very self-explanatory. It left us understanding, left me understanding and and people that I've spoken with about the sanctification and and what that does for us. And so I thank you for this series. We're really excited for the upcoming parts. Uh, And as listeners out there, again, please spread the word. The idea behind this podcast is not just to have one more thing to fill our time, because I'm sure, Pastor Dan, you have a lot of other things you could do, uh, but really to make sure that people are understanding what's going on and giving them a chance to get questions that they may have that are in this pertinent topic answered. And, and we, we care about you guys. And again, spread the word as you're listening in your cars, on your drives home, whatever it might be. We pray that this is a resource for you. Yeah. Write those questions down and make sure to send them to us. Email at rockchurch.com or hit us up on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, post it in the comments, uh, or, you know, even write it down when you're at church and drop it in the prayer box. Yeah. And we'll make sure to get that to the right place. God bless you guys. I look forward to seeing you in church.